live on Facebook. I think it's working. Sweet. One o'clock on a Tuesday. Said I'd jump on and I am. A little bit of a delay with Zoom. So hopefully I'm catching up now. Um, as always, if you're jumping on and you have something to say, post it in the comments. I, um, I decided to do this live today because I'm at the gym this morning and I'm reading, like I'm listening to my headphones, but I'm reading the captions coming on for the news and they were talking about the government shutdown and how, um, you know, they have all these furloughed employees and that they have certain business businesses who are actually offering like free meals on Fridays to government employees who've been furloughed or, um, you know, discounts on all these other things. And it kind of like, I, I get it. I get, uh, and let me, let me throw out this disclaimer real quick, because if you're watching this and you're only going to watch the first 10 seconds of it and start complaining that I'm heartless and I, I don't understand, you need to watch this whole video because I don't want to hear that. <laughs> I, I look, I totally feel for all those who have been impacted by the shutdown, who are sitting at home right now, who are unpaid and waiting on, you know, Washington to get back in gear. I get it. I get it. But guess what? And this is going to be hard to hear. It's your fault. You put yourself in this predicament. Okay. So if you're worrying about how you're going to make ends meet because you just got sent home because the government shut down, I can't help you. And neither should, I don't even understand why all these businesses are saying, Hey, let me give you free food and let me do this. Let me guess what people get laid off every single day, every day, every day, people are losing their jobs. And this is the problem with our society because there's this false sense of job security. Okay. It's, you know, this is, this is the government we're talking about. This isn't even like a big corporate giant. The government can shut down and there is nothing that you can do about it. It doesn't matter how hard you worked. It doesn't matter how good you were at your job. It doesn't matter how many hours you put in, how long you've worked there, how loyal you've been to your employer, whether you're working for the government, whether you're working for a big corporation, people lose jobs every day. Why? Because when it all things are said and done, I can guarantee that if it's between you and the CEO getting his bonus, if it's between you and the president getting his wall, if it's, you're, you're not going to win. You're not. And that's the problem with our society today is that so many people have this false sense of job security and you lay it all on the line and you hedge all your bits. And if something shuts down tomorrow, you don't have a pot to piss in. And that's the reality of it. That's why it's so important to have multiple streams of income, to have something as a backup plan because you can't control what other what a business owner is going to do. You can't control if um, a kid that you've been working somewhere for 15 years and a kid comes fresh out of college and they can pay him half of your salary and now they need to cut expenses and you're going to lose your job. You can't control these things. And the reality is all you can control is you. So instead of thinking that there is a such thing as job security, Think in a way that there's nothing, that you're the only one that you can depend on, because I can promise you right now, 99% of the people who were impacted by this, just like 99% of the people who may get laid off today or tomorrow or whatever, don't have any other source of income. They don't have six months savings. They don't have anything. And now they're struggling. They're, they're robbing Peter to pay Paul. And it's not a good situation to be in. I can promise you that if you asked a thousand people to sum up in a single word what a typical job or what the future looks like to them, they're going to tell you that, you know, oh, well, you know, you go to school, you, you get good grades, you go to college, you find a job with excellent benefits, then you work 40 or 50 years, you get to retire with a gold watch, and hopefully at that point, you're not too decrepit to enjoy the money that you've saved. But when you think about it, here's the thing. Think about putting your kids in that same situation if you have kids, right? Is that what you would want for them? What if they don't want to go to college? 
You know, what if, what if they want to travel the world instead? Are they going to be failures because they didn't follow that, that structure and rely on that quote unquote job security? What if they don't want to spend 40 or 50 hours a year punching a freaking clock? Would you say that they're irresponsible? No, no, you're going to be like, I want you to go and enjoy your life. You know what it came down to me? One day I was literally, I've, I've told this story probably umpteen times. I was standing in my laundry room and I had just gotten home for traveling from the whole week and I was making good money. I had a six figure salary, but the reality was I was coming home. I was waking up early. I was going to work for an employer who wasn't loyal to me, even though I was loyal to them. I was working my ass off 50, 60 hours a week traveling across the country, missing things for my kids, coming home, unpacking my suitcase in the laundry room and doing laundry, going to sleep, waking up and starting over and doing it all over again. And I had this epiphany and it was like, what the hell am I doing? I'm not going to do this for the next 50 years. I'm, I'm just not. And that's the point that you come to. It's like, is this what you really want? Want? Because that's the rat race, pure and simple. And is that a bad thing? No. Not necessarily. It works for those who need structure and direction in their lives. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't also have additional streams of income helping you. Maybe a side hustle. Maybe it's an investment property. Maybe it's, you know, doing stuff online. The opportunities are endless. Y'all, technology, you can work from anywhere doing anything, monetizing the skills that you already have. Are you a teacher? Guess what? I have friends actually two of them that I can think of off the top of my head that tutor kids in China from their living room and they're making more money than most teachers. Opportunities are endless. It's just a matter of taking advantage of them. I personally can't, couldn't imagine again, working in a, a job until I'm 50, you know, but I, I think it's extremely common for people who want that sense of security but it's incredibly sad to settle for something and actually want the safety when that's meaningless and there's so much more to life because you're really never safe. And that whole job security thing, it's a myth. I mean, like I said earlier with the US government, you can work for the government and you still, you, this is the greatest thing about a government employee. And, and I don't care who gets mad at me because my husband's a government employee, so I can say this. The reality is that you, you aren't, paid on performance. Guess what? You go and you show up and you punch the clock and you sit at your desk in your cubicle for eight hours a day. And guess what? You're still going to have a job tomorrow, nine times out of 10, right? There's very little you can do to get fired from the U S government or lose job. But when it shuts down, it shuts down. So you still goes to show you, you have no job security. Why? Because someone else makes the decisions. You can't be in control of your career your finances, your happiness, when somebody else has the power to fire you and take away everything that you've always worked for, right? I mean, it, it just makes sense. How many stories have you heard? How many times have you seen people who have worked long, a long time at you know jobs for all these years? They were hardworking, they were dedicated, they were loyal. They would miss their kid's baseball game because they're working overtime, getting laid off. It's sad. It's sad. Why? And you, I mean, even like the last half of 2008 and, you know, the first few months of 2009 with the financial crisis and the stock market was up in arms and everything else, large established companies were folding left and right. They were just toppling. So it wasn't even like the little guys, you know, it was, it was Bear Stearns and it was GM and Chrysler and Washington Mutual, a conglomerate, like this huge conglomerate, Circuit City, you know, they just went under. And what do you think happened to those thousands of employees that had good, good benefits and good retirement and good incomes. Yeah, the security of that big company, it didn't exempt them from getting thrown out onto the streets to fend for themselves, did it? No, no, it didn't. So if you're gonna be truly financially secure, you have to be the decision maker. And look, I'm not advocating that you run into the boss's nail office now and start slamming shit around and saying, I quit and I'm out of here. But I can think of no better way to be in total control of your financial future than to somehow think of how you're going to have your own business. And it can be, like I said, it can be on the side. You know, personally, my business, I started when I was still working full time, doing it on the side. But don't be satisfied with spending the best years of your life. And, and quite honestly, most of your life 
building another person's business and slaving away for somebody who could give, you know, two craps about you in the long run, if it comes down to you or them. You're totally capable of finding something you love to do and creating a business from it. Think about the skill sets that you have. I can promise you a hundred with a hundred percent certainty that you have a skill that you can monetize. I promise you, it doesn't matter who you are. I don't care if you're a mechanic. I don't care if you're a teacher, a lawyer, a doctor. And guess what? A lot of times you can even create passive incomes from these skill sets. It's just understanding that there are other ways to do things besides what you're accustomed to. And the problem is, again, and here I go on my soapbox, but we, we're, we live in a society that breeds sheep. I mean, it is what it is. The vast majority of Americans are scared to, to, to rock the boat, to say something that might offend somebody else. I don't know if y'all seen that video where like they're sitting in, I think it's like a doctor's office and one person stands up and claps. And then all of a sudden, like they have the whole room standing up clapping and nobody knows why the hell they're doing it. It is. It's, it's an, uh, an age of sheep. And it's not an insult. It's just a fact. People, just like sheep in today's world, need to be told what to do. And I think that because we were raised a certain way to believe that you need to follow that certain path in life to be successful, the school, the college, the good job, the 50 years, it's no surprise that most of us need to be led. But there are countless different ways to create security for yourself. You just need to figure out what that path is gonna look like and just make one small tweak. And that one tweak to your daily life, to your habits, to a business that you wanna create could mean literally living on the street or putting food on the table when the day does come that somebody chooses their big bonus over your job. And I can tell you, I'm not an expert in any stretch of the imagination on, um, you know, telling you specifically, hey, this is exactly what you need to do. But what I do know is that I spent 14 years as an employee and job security is complete bullshit. And I've seen job security fail more times than I want to remember. So think about what it is that you can do in your life, again, to monetize the skill sets that you already have. And that might mean, you know, investing in learning or investing in, in um, a business or just invest in yourself because nobody else is going to do it. Nobody else cares. And if you want to get ahead, that's the only way that it's going to happen. You got to depend on yourself. Word. I'm probably going to get a little backlash about this. I didn't feel it coming. It's a grant there. Yeah, no, Joe, absolutely. You know, everybody, and I had this conversation this morning too, which is actually kind of funny because talk to a business owner, he has three businesses and he's like, I'm so tired of working in the business every day. And a lot of times that happens, you, you start a business and you just create another job for yourself because you think, okay, well, I'm gonna start this as a business owner and I'm gonna have, you know, I'm going to be able to be flexible and do whatever it is that I want. And the reality is you wind up working more hours for yourself because you don't have good systems in place. And that that's the problem, I think, with most small businesses is that they don't have systems that can be replicated that an idiot can come in and run. That's why McDonald's is so successful. That's why you can pay somebody six dollars an hour to come work at, at McDonald's and they can do the job. It's because they have systems that teach you everything from how do you clean the bathroom to how many pickles to put on the hamburger? And most small businesses lack good systems, which means they can't, they have no structure and they can't scale. So what happens is those business owners get stuck working in that business every day because they don't have anybody that can do it for them. And that, you know, that comes with time. Um, but that, again, it's learning, you know, how to structure, how to invest in yourself, what systems work best for you and documenting it and teaching it but you can be successful and, you know, things can run like clockwork, like a well-oiled machine. If you just know how to do it. So that's Amy's rant for today. Um, what, what's y'all's thoughts on it? You know, the government shut down. Do you think not only that, how it's impacting people, um, you know, steps that you can take, uh, you know, there's a poem or like a haiku or whatever the hell it is that there's no indispensable man. And I firmly believe in that. 
Everybody is dispensable. Doesn't matter how good you are, how long you've been there, how much money you make, you could be the number one salesperson in the company. And that doesn't mean that you can't be replaced. Beyonce was lying when she said irreplaceable. I mean, you're Beyonce. I don't know, whatever. Because everybody can be replaced unless you're the only one who can make that decision. Is what it is. Awesome word for the day. And I will see y'all later.